So tonight we're going to um, talk about measuring using the uh, pointing system. It's a tool. This is a tool, uh, a lot like a ladder in your garage. You don't need it for every job, but when you've got something complicated, you'd be surprised how, how much easier it is to draw something like a horse running at you if you have the right tool, okay? Um, the uh, grid, the ruler and the grid were invented 2,000 years ago by the ancient Egyptians. Uh, they, were, they didn't have any success scaling up their statues. Their, their leaders wanted their statues to be like 30 and 40 feet tall. And it's really hard to scale things up without a tool. So they invented a tool that would help them scale things up. And the technique I want you to use with uh, the grid is the pointing technique. So that means we're going to look for key points, you know. For example, where is the highest point on his back right here? Well, it's in this box. And now I want to estimate where it is in that box. So sometimes I'll visualize the center and I'll say it's, it's right above center, about right here. That's a point. Uh, where are the tips of his ears? Well, I think that one is about right here. And it's not perfectly accurate, but it's, it sure beats just trying to wing it, you know, with no tool. Essentially, we're taking a big, complex problem and breaking it down into one, two, three, four, five, about 40 or so smaller problems. The tip of this other ear is here. Now pay attention. The things I look for when I'm, when I'm pointing are obviously the tips of things like the ears or where's the end of his chin. I'm going to say that's about right here. But I also look sometimes for um, where does his back cross this line? I'm going to say about right here. Or where does his hip cross this line? I'm going to say about right here. Um, so I'm just going to focus for this demonstration on this section of the horse. I've got the uh, two tips of the ears. I might decide where I want to, where that eye is. It's in this box. Here's the center of the box. So I'm going to estimate that eye is about right there. And the other one is out here somewhere. The top of his nostril is uh, about right here. His mane comes out to about right here. Make a mark there. His neck crosses this line about right here. Uh, I think I'm going to start sketching this section. I, I think I have enough to start uh, to start to sketch. So I generally sketch with angles to start off with and I keep things nice and loose. Sometimes I use ovals or other shapes, but Also look at shapes like here I know the lines in there or you can see a shape here outside of his shoulder that's called a negative shape so if I were working on this section I want to try to get this shape right if I get that shape right I'm going to get his shoulder right so this is a tool like um, like a saw or a, or a hammer. You don't need it for every drawing, but when you're doing something complicated, this is a great tool to have at your access. We put grids on images for people all the time. If there's something you would like to draw, picture of your dog or your horse or your whatever pet, <coughs> bring it in or email it to us and we will get a grid on it for you.
I would say grit, the grid is probably the most common tool for me uh, when I'm doing things that are kind of complicated. Uh, another thing I, I like about grids are um, you can easily scale things up or down with a grid. In other words, let's say you wanted to put this on your wall in your bedroom, which by the way, I'd probably recommend you try you do that. Just make a giant painting on your wall. But if I made each square, I could have this just the size that it is, but if I made on my wall each square, let's say 12 inches, now I'm gonna have a five foot by seven foot mural on my wall. And that's how a lot of murals are done, by the way, uh, by gridding. Um, so I'm gonna conclude, that's my sketch. But I wanna show you one other uh, quick thing that has a little bit to do with history. How many of you are familiar with Mount Rushmore? Everybody's familiar with Mount Rushmore, the carving of four presidents' heads in the, um, what mountains are they in? The Ozarks? No? In the Dakotas. In the Dakotas. Have to look that up. So the sculptor's name was Borglund and he used this same technique to carve those heads. I believe those heads are 60 feet tall and it would be impossible to get a likeness of a human being, meaning get it to look like someone without some kind of a measuring technique. So here's how they did it. Uh, down at the, at, at the base camp, in a tent, he had made clay sculptures of the president. Much better than my drawing here. Of course, the president's had long hair. Um, in the top, now these are just life size, like normal life size head. In the top, they had a rod sticking down into the clay. Off of that rod, they had a, what's called an armature. And that armature could rotate. And they had a dial on it. And the dial had 360 degrees. <coughs> so they could know exactly where the armature was pointing. Out here at a certain distance, we'll call this 10, maybe 10 inches. They had a string with a rope. And that's called a plumb line. And let's say they were trying to figure out where is Lincoln's nose inside of this mountain, gonna be inside of this mountain. So they, they know this measurement, they know this measurement, they measure down to right here, let's call that eight, and then they measure from here to here. And they also know where they're on this dial. So let's say the dial is at 114 just happens to be turned and it's on a 114. So they took all these coordinates and we'll call this four. So 10 out, eight down, four into the tip of the nose. And they, up on the mountain, there was another armature for each president, only it's like 60 times bigger. And then there is a rotating rod coming off of that out into space out here that's 60 times bigger and then there's a rope coming off of that and at the end of the rope was a man with a drill and they would send him these coordinates but they would multiply everything like let's say they had multiplied everything times 10 so this would be 40 now so they would measure how far out he was, how far down, and then he was told how far to drill in 
and if he drilled into the correct coordinate and then stopped, they knew that's exactly where the tip of Lincoln's nose would be. And that's a very common uh, sculpting technique. It's the way Michelangelo carved the statue of David. Um, and a lot of other famous carvings were done that way. It's not the only way to carve, but it's a way to carve when you're trying to get an exact likeness. So that is the technique called pointing. All right, 